In episode one, we discussed the many advantages of using point clouds. But what are the downsides to using point clouds? First and foremost, file size. Point clouds can produce very large files. The average phase-based scanner can collect four to five gigabytes of data per day. While many software platforms have point cloud engines that allow for the importation of point cloud data sets, most struggle with large point clouds. This is especially apparent if the workstation has not been maximized for such tasks with a 64-bit operating system, lots of RAM, and a very good video card. This brings us to the second downside of point clouds, platform interoperability. There are a lot of fine design programs that simply do not allow users to leverage point cloud data. Add to these those that require third-party plugins and others that move so slowly as to be unusable once they import a point cloud, and you have a lot of software looking for a different solution. For many, that solution is 3D modeling. There are three basic types of models that are produced from point clouds. The first are two-dimensional models. These are essentially line work, like a topographic map, or a floor plan, or an elevation view of a structure. The second are three-dimensional geometric or spatial models. These can be anything from three-dimensional line work, to 3D solids, to NURBS surfaces. The third are three-dimensional intelligent models. Intelligent models compile geometric qualities with additional attributes and relationships. These attributes can be anything from something as simple as a part number to something as complex as the complete manufacturing process necessary to produce said part. The key differentiator between 3D geometric models and 3D intelligent models is that the 3D geometric models only have geometric attributes. The intelligent models have the ability to link to other data sets. Let's look at examples of these three types of models and cover how each is created. 2D models are what most people think of when they envision blueprints or a drawing sheet set. These can be created from point clouds using several different methods. No one method is the correct method, it is a case of finding the most correct method for each particular application. Take land mapping for instance. Here we have a golf green. Our point cloud records the elevation and position of the green for us. However, most of us are accustomed to reading greens via elevation coloring or contour lines. The most accurate way to convert the point cloud into one of these is to create a surface model from the point cloud. After cleaning the point cloud of non-surface data, the surface cloud is then converted into a tin mesh. In this case, we use the Leica Cyclone software suite to create the mesh. However, there are many software applications that can accomplish this task. Once the point cloud has been converted into a mesh, the mesh surface can be used to form contour lines for a two-dimensional deliverable. It is important to remember that any 2D deliverable from a point cloud is a reduction or projection as the point cloud is natively 3D. This is quite an advantage Many 2D deliverables require that a structure be drawn from multiple points of view in order to describe the structure's attributes in all three dimensions. The fact that all two-dimensional line work is derived from a single 3D environment ensures that all sheets in a drawing sheet set match one another. This can be accomplished by either tracing the 3D point cloud with line work or by creating a 3D model from the point cloud and then using a cut plane or a series of cut planes to create the two-dimensional orthographic projections that are needed for the sheet set. As I said, the only way to use a cut plane for a 2D projection is to have a 3D model. So how do we create this 3D model? Essentially, the process requires an operator to select a section of a point cloud 
and tell the modeling software what that selection is. For example, here we have a pipe run. First we select a single pipe and isolate it. Next, we use the create model command and identify the highlighted section as a cylinder. At this point, the modeling algorithm creates a cylinder that best fits the point cloud data. By using such a program, the operator can review the model's fit by overlaying it on the point cloud or by viewing the fit to cloud properties of the modeled object. Most point cloud software is able to use the same fit to cloud command for more complex shapes as well. Here we have an example of modeling a wide flange steel beam. Point cloud modeling softwares offer a large variety of modeling commands in addition to fit to cloud, including inserting objects, copy and paste functions, and the ability to alter the properties of any modeled object. The point here is not to teach you how to model, but to demonstrate that it's not an automatic process. While many companies have introduced applications that automatically create models from point clouds, the truth is that even the best require a knowledgeable user. The newest type of model is the three-dimensional intelligent model. These were introduced in the world of scanning through specialty applications for piping systems. However, the current drive for intelligent modeling is in response to the rapid growth in building information modeling software platforms such as Autodesk Revit or Bentley Architecture. These building information modeling platforms are referred to as BIM apps. How laser scanning is incorporated into these platforms is a developing story. Some clients pull the point cloud directly into the application. Others import the 3D geometric model or reference it into the BIM app. This allows new designs to be created in the environment in which they will be installed. However, large models, especially those containing very large numbers of cylinders, can be difficult to work with as they can really slow down the user's ability to move around in the BIM app. Another method is to completely remodel the structure as a native BIM object. This is accomplished by using the point cloud as a guide or by using the 3D geometric model as the basis for creating family components to be used in constructing the full BIM. The upside of this method is that it doesn't bog down the BIM app during downstream work. And you gain the ability to leverage the metadata that is added when you classify each geometric shape. It should be noted, however, that this metadata must be collected independent of the laser scan's point cloud. While the scanner is great, it can't see through walls, define component hierarchies, or collect any other information that's not visible to the eye. The downside of this type of modeling is that it is costly and can take as much time as creating the geometric model, essentially doubling the modeling cost. And lastly, we have clients that use a third application to view the BIM design with the point cloud and or the geometric model. The preferred way of doing this would be to pull data from each team or vendor in the project and view them all together in an application like Navisworks. The advantage here is that each person can stay with the software they prefer. Revit MEP for systems, AutoCAD for structural, uh, MicroStation for site work, etc. Each exports to a common format and then the project manager views it all together in Navisworks. The downside is it requires a lot of pre-planning as everyone has to work in the same coordinate system so that each system aligns in Navisworks. 
and the changes require a bit of back and forth, meaning that a change that's precipitated by a view in Navisworks requires an upstream change in, say, Revit MEP, which then requires a secondary export to then be imported again into Navisworks for checking of that work. At this point, there's no one right way, just a lot of wrong ways in the way that works for you. There is another discussion that needs to occur before laser scanning data is used in a BIM app. First, what is your intended use of that data? If it's only to design around it without clashes, it may not be necessary for the model to be intelligent at all, just geometrically accurate. And since this is less costly, that would be the preferred path to take. If it's only so that it can be shown in sheet sets that are rendered so easily out of these BIM apps, once again, the intelligence is not necessarily needed. The second is what's the accuracy level that you need? We all say that we want data that's as accurate as possible. However, BIM apps are geared toward architects, and as a result, the walls are straight and plumb, the floors are level, and I can guarantee you that the laser scanning data will show that the actual conditions are a bit different. Floors float, walls move, beams get twisted over time. Any movement to make it look right or to clean it up is actually a decrease in accuracy. Answering these types of questions will go a long ways toward developing a methodology that keeps you from wasting time and money on accuracies that aren't needed or intelligence that isn't utilized throughout the project life. I hope you found the examples of ways that models are created from point clouds informative. But please understand that these were just a few examples. It is, by no means, comprehensive. A comprehensive look would require a video series in and of itself for each modeling application. Next time, we'll look at some examples of ways to leverage these models. While we all may be familiar with the standard deliverables, there are many exciting opportunities outside of these deliverables to increase the return on your investment in laser scanning. For more information concerning any aspect of technical documentation and visualization, contact GDM through any of the links shown here. If you need project-specific information, email us at laserscan at gpdminc.com.